Jack, <clears throat> Brian, guess what? I I can't guess. I what? There's a new opportunity to make this podcast some money. Awesome. Yes. What do you have to do? Well, uh, you know Ann Landers. <laughs> I do know Ann Landers. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's dead, but they're looking for a replacement. <laughs> uh huh. And so what they need is somebody who's going to take questions from people and answer them. And I don't know if you know the racket, but you know, you've got a whole team writing answers for you. So all you need to do is just read these poor people's questions and the answers to help them get along with their lives. And, uh, and if you do that and you're professional about it, we can make some money. Oh, that, well, that's great. I mean, it, it, you know, f smart to sort of tap into the Ann Landers market, you know, for people, uh, you know, over 60 who still remember her. Um, yeah. So I, it's, that's really great. It's a really great business choice, Brian. I'm so excited. She's an advice columnist. That's right. There we go. And you could be, too, if you play your cards right. Well, this is great. I mean, all I have to do is read this. Let me um, I heard so you send the email. I sent you it and we just let's read it and let's get this going. Let's make us some money. All right. So I, I just, I just got it now. Um, let yep. me just read it ahead of time just so I can it. just read it now. Cause there's no time. We don't want to waste any time. You know, there's a contest out there for, for these people. Uh, we want to be the first ones to, to get our entry in. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Then I want the money. So, okay, whatever. So, all right. Tell me when to start. <clears throat> all right. Dear Jack Landers. I'm a 16 year old girl and I've been struggling a little bit. My family is very religious and they believe that members of the LGBTQIA plus 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 community are sinful and will burn in hell, especially when they sing YMCA and dance on flatbed trucks in their tidy whities. I do not agree with my parents' views and I think we should tolerate people no matter where they park their dingaroos. <laughs> I'm sorry, no matter where they park their didgeridoos. <laughs> Two of my friends have recently come out to me. One uh, says she is bisexual, which means she likes boobies and dinkies. <laughs> so glad she's explaining this. The other one says she is gender fluid, which means that she needs a lot of attention on. <laughs> on Mondays, she dresses like a car mechanic. And by Friday, she's done up like a hyper sexy Jedi and calls herself Luke Streetwalker. <laughs> I like my friends a lot, and it hurts me to hear my parents make negative comments about people who are born that way or just need attention. I want to say something, but I'm scared to tell them my opinion. My brother Rodney did once, so Dad made him drink a Drano smoothie, and it dissolved most of his esophagus. Can you help me? Signed, Keeping Quiet in California. And here's the answer. Dear Keeping Quiet, you are a very good friend to be concerned. My feeling is that even though bisexual women are pretty hot... It's not likely to change the way your parents feel on the subject if they are devout Christians or Muslims. My guess is your dad would probably be totally turned on by a bisexual girl and her friend dressed like Luke Streetwalker, but your mom most likely wouldn't because many women lack the horn dog gene the men have. So she would likely invoke devil imagery and other non-sexy things. The last thing you want is for mom to be so mad that she withholds her marital duties from your dad, sending him into a rage. Then you come home and your mom is gone and your dad says she left the family, but there's a big lump in the backyard that your dog won't stop falling at. <laughs> the best bet is to wait until you and your friends are 18, at which point you are legally eman <laughs> emancipated and can tell your parents about your hot, sexy friends and the bisexual one can come over to my house and party with me in the garage. Well... Ooh. All right. I mean, listen, it's your first advice column. You know, it's hard maybe to, to process some of this stuff. I guess I, I re I mean, that one was hard to get through. It was apparently didgeridoos well, and, oh. well, you know what? We've got another chance. Okay. Some messed up advice there. <laughs> very immature, <laughs> very immature writer. I, I thought the writing was brilliant. Yeah, I don't know why you would think the writing was brilliant, but okay, here we go. <laughs> Take away, Jack Landers. All right, all right, I've just uh, opened it. Here we go. <clears throat> Dear Jack Landers, my best friend has an annoying habit that I need help addressing. Basically, he gives me unsolicited advice on everything under the sun. At first, it didn't bother me. 
Now it's constant and really makes me feel like he thinks I'm a total idiot who would completely fall apart without his helpful guidance. I know he means well, but it cr comes across as condescending. For example, I told him I was thinking about taking a trip to London. He told me I would need a passport to go there. Now, even though I want to be sarcastic and say, oh, really, you need a passport to travel internationally? I don't. Instead, I hold my tongue and pitch my cat. <laughs> Instead, I hold my tongue and pinch my cat until it wails. Then he tells me I shouldn't pinch cats until they wail. When he tells me that, I want to be sarcastic and say, oh, you think I shouldn't pinch Princess Buttercup? But instead, I keep my mouth shut and put a light bulb. <laughs> but instead, I keep my mouth shut and put a light bulb in my bum. Then he tells me that no one at the emergency room is going to believe me. When I tell them I tripped and accidentally sat at a light bulb, it's aggravating and as humiliating as being in the ER with a bum bulb. <laughs> I don't want to lose his friendship because his heart is in the right place and he has a nice yard. <laughs> but I am also tired of wailing cats and the threat of broken glass in my colon. Please advise. Signed, not a kid and not dumb. Dear not a kid, one way to handle it would be to ask your friend why the advice was being offered. If he tells you that you need a passport, ask him why he's telling you that. You might think he's questioning your intelligence, but it could be that it's based on a personal experience where he showed up at the airport without a passport. Likewise, maybe he's had a 25-watt bulb in his bum, and the ER nurse has laughed at his excuse, and he's trying to help you avoid a similar reaction by encouraging you to come up with a more plausible reason the x-ray shows a bulb in your bum. A little communication can really clear things up. If the FBI had only communicated with the CIA about the Saudi guys taking flying lessons, then we'd still have the World Trade Center and the TSA twats wouldn't exist. Oh, God. Mm. Well, you know, advice comes, you know, you got to build up. You, you just got to work at it. You I got mean, another yeah. chance. It gets super political at the end. <laughs> I did not see that lecture on 9-11 coming. Communication is important. I guess to Jack Landers, <laughs> it's really important. Oh, my gosh. All right. Big fan of the intelligence agencies. Okay, I've just opened the third one that you just sent me. All right, here's our chance. Last All right, chance. This, this is it. I'm not going to break. I'm a professional. Here we go. Dear Jack Landers, I, oh, I have something in my eye. There we go. Dear Jack Landers, I've been married for nearly 20 years, and in all that time, I never once got jealous. However, that has changed lately. My wife has been flirting with an acquaintance at work, and for some reason, I can't let it go, even though I know I should. It initially started at the company pool party. At first, I found the flirty banter funny, just the kind of thing you'd expect from someone being straddled in the hot tub. I laughed along with everyone else. But the flirting never seemed to stop. Continu continuing behind the pool shed, in the guest room, in the flatbed of his Ford F-150 Super Duty pickup truck. At some point, she disappeared, and I didn't see her until the following morning, when she came home totally disheveled and completely flirted out. When I told her that I felt that the flirting was making me uncomfortable, she accused me of being a jealous husband and took a week-long holiday in Puerto Rico with her colleague. colleague. I've felt terrible ever since, because I know it's my fault for being so insecure. How can I make it up to her? Signed, don't want to flirt up my marriage. <laughs> That's clever. Dear Flirt Up, Jealousy is a tricky emotion that we really need to keep in check. It can force us to jump to conclusions and make accusations that we will later regret, as you learned. It's obvious to anyone that your wife and her work colleague use flirtation to get them through the workday, and nothing more. If you'd only bitten your tongue, she might not have had to soothe her feelings with a week in Puerto Rico. A personal story. Last week, I came home early and went upstairs to find my moaning wife lying in bed naked with Kendrick Lamar's head buried in her lap. <laughs> At first, I had the terrible thought that my wife was having an ongoing affair with a Grammy Award winning recording artist. That made me feel terrible because I don't have a single Grammy. But then it occurred to me that Kendrick was most likely checking my wife for ticks because he doesn't want her to get Lyme disease. I smiled, knowing how caring and thoughtful he is, and I vowed to buy his latest album. I quietly closed the bedroom door and let him continue on his tick hunt. 
When I saw her two hours later, she was tick-free and happier than I'd ever seen her. I high-fived Kendrick and thanked him for taking the time out of his day to check my wife for ticks. That's the America I want to live in. Sugar. You know, it, it's, it doesn't help that Jack Landers appears to be a freaking idiot. Like, why can't I just answer the advice, the, the questions with my own advice? Uh, you know what? This is just the way they do it. The, the advice giving business has, has been around for a long time. There's Dear Abby and Ann Landers, and I think they were even sisters. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just the way it is. They, you know, you have a team of people who are experts and, and know the proper answer for all these all these people. And those but, are the proper um, answers. Hey, I, I don't, I don't challenge them. I, I don't have any expertise in, in marriages and Lyme disease and um, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> I don't know. Well, first of all, I know you have an expertise in Lyme disease. <laughs> That's actually true. I've had it a few times. Yes. Because and I've never something... had anybody checking me for ticks. <laughs> yeah, clearly. That's because your wife is uh, in Puerto Rico with Kendrick Lamar. That's right. Or she, loves, she loves Puerto Rican food. <sighs> she does. Um, well, damn. Um, I, I'm sorry, Brian. I, I tried to do my best. I, I apologize for not being better. I will see if we can get another shot. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Reach out for me. All right, Jack. Well, review us and all that. Yeah, that would really be great. Uh, a review, uh, you know, be sure to drop us a line, send us a tweet, whatever. We love hearing from you guys. And, um, you know, thanks for listening. It's great to be back. It's great you be back, Jack. You you ruined it. I that was the close what I said. 